All right, everybody, thank you for coming today. Uh, today we're going to have uh, our very own Marco. Uh, and he's going to present on something that was uh, basically requested, which is the um, the securing your home perimeter. Basically, that's uh, 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 the focus we try to get to this presentation. Uh, some items uh, for uh, housekeeping. Uh, there will not be um, any physical meetings in the near future. Um, Unfortunately, as you, all of you may know, uh, that things are not going in the right direction. Uh, and in fact, I don't think we have yet seen the worst of this. Um, so please stay safe. Uh, take this seriously. I know you're in California. I don't need to say this, but we do this in California and uh, Florida a lot. And obviously, nobody paid much attention. Uh, so please try to stay safe. Uh, mute yourself. If you're not uh, asking a question or if you're not uh, participating, I'm assuming Marco. Marco, will, I'll let Marco in a minute take over. Uh, but um, we want you to uh, be aware that we're going to continue doing our meetings online. Um, I actually, I, believe it or not, I booked my flight for August 14th, uh, thinking that things were going to get better somehow. but. We now know that that's not the case. Uh, so, so for now, there's just not going to be any physical meetings. The after one's going to be virtual. Um, we are moving, or we created a Discord um, server. Uh, the invites are in Slack. Uh, so please click on the invite and, and join Discord. If you want to attend DEFCON any way, uh, you're going to have to have a, a Discord account because uh, DEFCON decided to 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 do it via Discord. Um, also, invitation and membership will be uh, verified. Uh, we're a little worried about many bots in Discord. Uh, apparently, there's there's bots. Some of those bots follow you wherever you go and 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 they're nosy. So uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna address that and. Uh, um, we we obviously we want to we want to create an environment where everybody feels free to speak freely and comfortable. Um, as many of you know, there's there's been layoffs and they're continuing, but the job channel I'm posting everything I get every week, so there's still uh, jobs out there. And for those of you who had hit, please if you if you need help, hit me up, and uh, we're trying to do our best to refer you or or. Or send you whatever descriptions we have. The people that was laid off about a week or two ago, some of them are on their second, third interview. So uh, it looks like there's still uh, enough uh, out there. Um, and we need more presentations for the rest of the year. And since we're not going to meet uh, at the library, which was my my intent, um, and it was going to be a planning meeting, uh, we're going to we're going to need more. Uh, online presentations. We, I believe we have one coming from Lenin. Again, Lenin did an amazing presentation about um, the container security. Uh, I'm trying to, to get uh, Christina, who's so a great presenter, to, to give us another presentation. And then there's other people I'm talking. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some great content coming up. But if you feel like you have something together that you would like to uh, present, you, you will get priority because obviously you're part of the group. So, uh, so always the presentations will be saved in uh, um, the YouTube channel. And if you watching this and you want access to Slack and then uh, Discord, uh, you can email us at info at phack .org and And uh, we will give you access. So that, um, again, uh, due to the, the new variables in, in Discord, we are getting a little more uh, um, strict on, on membership. We want to make sure that if you're going to be there, you're going to participate and, and we know who you are. Uh, the rules are usually no recruiters because I, I get complaints all the time that recruiters just start reaching out to people and then in journalists. Uh, you can speak to the journalists all you want. I, I just don't want journalists grabbing the stuff out of the channel uh, and we don't know who they are. Uh, other than that, um, thank you for being here today. And with that in, in mind, uh, I will pass it out to our very own Marco. So Marco, take it away. All right. Uh, okay. 
Can everyone hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Cool. All right, so let me present, uh, share my screen. Uh, did you give me um, presentation? Uh, yeah, presenter. Like, yeah, sorry, yeah, just, you and I think that there's only one person um, on me, so go ahead and I need everyone. Okay, um, now you're a presenter. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. All right, cool, awesome. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, everyone, to for joining us today. Um, uh, definitely uh, not not good times right now. You know, it looks like a lot of people, you know, or uh, either relatives or people that you know of, are either getting um, sick because of COVID, and in other instances, you know, for other reasons, but kind of related to COVID. So. Uh, but anyways, keep your, um, you know, be safe. And uh, well, that's my, my first I wanted to say. Uh, so today I'm gonna be presenting at, about uh, how to secure your home. And I'll, I'll tell you in a second why I choose the type, this title of securing the edge. So with that, I'm gonna go with my disclaimer that all my opinions are my own and they do not represent the opinions of my employer. Although I have to make an exception here, I, I will have to mention, and it's not a, a sales pitch or anything, but I will demonstrate something with uh, one of my company's products. But with that being said, it's not a sales, really a sales pitch. It's just, you know, part of the presentation. Uh, any questions, you know, contact me directly. So who I am, uh, as you probably know me already, I've been in, in Pacific Hackers, AKA Hack the Valley, you know, since it was created. And uh, I, you know, I, you know, and I've been in the industry for for a few years now, and uh, uh, currently working for Fortinet. And I, 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 I love doing secure operations. That's kind of like my um, my expertise, and uh, that's why I really wanted to give this topic because, um, like Rod said, you know, this was a kind of kind of like an unofficial request. Someone propose to give a presentation on what are the things that we can do at home, um, you know, to, to pro protect ourselves. And um, so that's why I picked this topic. So I'm gonna show you different technologies uh, today that is gonna help you to, to secure your home from the cheapest to the expensive one, but, you know, and, and, and then at the end, you will take your, you know, um, you, you choose which one to take. So. With that, uh, the agenda for today, and we're going to discuss defense in depth. Um, we're going to compare the technologies, and lastly, I'm going to uh, do a demo. So, why defense in depth? So, this is the reason for the title, uh, securing the edge. So, as you can see, just from the uh, uh, the firewall here, um, firewalls are always in the edge. Now, I have to say, from a modern security uh, operations perspective. Firewalls is not the only thing that needs to be, you know, that, that was kind of like late 90s, you know, early 2000s, um, you know, way of preventing attacks. Uh, but nowadays, you know, attackers are using different uh, things, you know, so that's why um, in a defense in that perspective, you have to have all the things that at one point I mentioned, you have to have a firewall and that's on the edge. You have a, you need to have an IPS IDS system, and then you know uh, authentication, um, you know endpoint detection and response tools, antivirus, host detection, all those things. And and again, uh, this is a so since at home, I'm thinking you know um, regular people will not have like a web server or will not have any of that. You know sometimes that's why you know we get our modem and then we get one of those like link seeds or, you know, any of those routers, but that's not really, you know, a protection. However, again, attackers are looking for more attractive um, targets and, and your home probably will not be. However, if, if you do have some servers, then you probably will need something else. Um, as a secure professionals, we want to make sure that whatever we're securing, we start from, from 
you know, from our house. I'm making sure our families have the, the best protection, whether it's an antivirus, whether it is a two-factor authentication, whether, you know, you know, and now even having an option of having a firewall on your home, you know, that is gonna block any network attacks, okay? So this is why I choose defend, um, um, securing the edge because we're gonna be talking about firewalls. Um, so where are firewalls? So basically a firewall, and, and I don't really have to explain it much. You probably know what a firewall is, but basically it's just, you know, the uh, uh, an appliance that is gonna uh, block um, um, connections based on rules. So you can allow ping, you can allow SSH, you can allow HTTP, HTTPS, you know, get into your house or you cannot. Um, so if, let's say that you are at home and this is very common. They, they don't put it this way, but what it's basically mean like on a regular uh, home appliance, like a Linksys router, the uh, port forwarding. Sometimes if you have like a, I don't know, like a Plex server or something along the line, it will say you have to modify these servers in order to talk to the outside. That's basically this kind of like the same concept in, in a firewall when you're creating the rules. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, you're just creating a rule uh, that is gonna either block the connection or not. But the, again, that's late 90s, you know, early 2000s, uh, you know, not so much. Now we're gonna be talking about next generation firewall. And why I mention that is because next generation firewalls is all in one appliance. You have a proxy server uh, built in, you have a, a um, you know, a application uh, visibility and control, malware protection. It's able to SSL and uh, decrypt SSL uh, communications, uh, you know, and, and it has like a, its own uh, website blocker and stuff like that. Now, with that being said, you know, everybody probably in, 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 the, in the room here will say, well, do, do I really need that at home? But then the answer, the answer will be depends, depends what you have at home and you, what you have to secure. And, and that's basically the concept when you are purchasing uh, equipment for your enterprises. Obviously, I'm just gonna focus right now on, on a home, but then this is, this is just the same general concept that is gonna apply everywhere else. So um, buy what you need in order to, to secure your environment. If your environment at home, it's, um, you know, you need, you have servers, you, you know, stuff like that, then you need proxies, then you need firewalls, then you need IDS, IPS, you, you need stuff like that just to have visibility on your network. So with that, I'm gonna give you the options that you have and uh, also call it contenders because we're gonna, uh, I'm going to guide you through some of these um, technologies, and at the end, we're going to choose a winner. So, um, as you can see on this picture, um, uh, commercial products are kind of like what's on top, and open source is pretty much an airplane. So, once you get the uh, um, access, uh, whether it's, let's say, on a phone, if you root your phone, uh, you, you enable capabilities that you didn't have before. If you, uh, um, you know, uh, in this case, if, if, if we install a new um, firmware on your uh, home device that is just pretend to do basic stuff, now we're going to be able to make the capability or stuff like that. But just remember with open source, and I think we, we talked about this before, uh, open source is it's very nice, but it's by any means, it's not easy. Uh, you really have to know what you're doing in order to, to to apply the concept, otherwise you're just gonna be on secure as you know everybody else. So with this, um, you have three options basically. You have the option of being very cheap, almost free, and with that because um, again you can turn on your Linksys device, your ASUS, your um, Netgear into a very sophisticated device where you're gonna be able to have all, not pretty much almost like a next generation firewall but very close. Um, then we're gonna have the same I chip and that's basically installing, whether it's virtualized or whether it is uh, on an actual uh, box, we're gonna do, uh, we can install PFSense or Open uh, OpenSense. And then expensive, then you can buy an actual uh, commercial product. 
such as a Fortinet firewall, Palo Alto firewall checkpoint. Um, so with that, I'm going to continue with uh, what's DDWR team. I'm not going to read through what's in here, but I, I'm just going to tell you from experience because I, I, I deal with these uh, systems before. Um, DDWRT is one of my favorites. And the reason why it's one of my favorites is because it has a, a tons of support uh, for uh, different routers uh, comparing to the other contenders. Um, pretty much all of them have the same features, but also another thing is that it's huge on uh, community contribution. So if, if something's wrong or you know doesn't make sense, you can join um, uh, groups in, on Facebook where you know they they put uh, questions and people respond to it, and it's very helpful. A lot of people are you know geeks are are running uh, the WRT at home for different purposes. Some of them have it at the edge. Some others they use it as a wireless repeater or or wireless access point or, or whatever the case is. Um, but it, again, uh, it's an open source product. It's a firmware that is open source. And and one of the weaknesses is if you're not if you're new to this, one thing, um, yeah, you can break your device, which means that you you if you don't know how to do this, you you will break your system. And what I will suggest and just you know is read all the uh, documentation before even applying something. Because then at least you know what troubleshooting steps you can do afterwards. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously with open source, not everything is updated, um, you know, right away. So you have to find, um, you know, until the, uh, the, the manufacturer sends an update and then the DDWRT people, you know, um, makes a change and stuff like that. Uh, next to it is Tomato. And Tomato, again, is just basically um, the same as EDWRT. Um, I like their interface. Uh, I think they're very, they have a very clean interface. Um, but they, again, one of the weaknesses is they have a small community. Not everybody uses that. Um, and, and also the, the, the support for routers are not, um, it's, it's not a lot. So, you know, that's pros and cons of it. Lastly, OpenWRT. Um, OpenWRT um, actually was the precursor of DDWRT. Now, just like any early Linux distributions, they, they don't look good. Um, they look, you know, pretty basic, um, not fancy colors, not any of that. But just like any Linux distribution, you can make uh, anything out of it, you know? So uh, again, some of the, the, the weaknesses here is uh, it's not as user friendly. Uh, you need to spend a lot of time just to get that going versus the others. They're actually, you know, the GUI's easy to handle. So, you know, and also they don't support, they only support a few routers. Now I will have to say this um, because I know someone's gonna ask. Um, OpenWRT, you can actually install OpenWRT uh, on a Raspberry Pi. And you can have your portable firewall, you know, uh, every time you travel. Well, not right now, but when you start traveling again, you can actually have your, um, you know, on a firewall on a Raspberry Pi versus DDWRT and uh, Tomato. They do not have the, uh, the firmware cannot be run on a Raspberry Pi. Even with the new Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigabytes and all that, they still have not have a support for that. Not that I am aware of. Uh, if, if you know and and you think we can do it, then uh, please let me know because I, I have not read about it. So, um, so again, uh, these are the three contenders when it comes to um, uh, Linux firmwares, um, and I will show you in a second. You know, on the demo how how they look. Um, now let's talk about the other options. PFSense. PFSense again. It was it's based on FreeBSD, um, and it was a very good project. Um, eventually, it was bought by Netgate, and that's when they start having like a full time support, more commercial. But it's still the, the the software itself, it's 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 free, so you can actually download it and uh, and try it. Uh, again, I'll show you a demo. But this one, what I like about PFSense is you can actually make this as a next generation firewall. Now, 
uh, why at the beginning say it's semi-free or semi-cheap is because um, if you have a um, you know a, a spare computer with you know all computers that you want to use, reuse again, you can install um, you know uh, PFSense, and now basically you don't have to spend any other money on firewalls or anything of that. Um, however, if you don't, then you have to buy a firewall. Um, and actually, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show that in a second. Um, you can buy a uh, bare bone and, and go from there. Uh, OpenSense is uh, the contender for um, for PFSense. And, and the thing about this is like, it actually has a better GUI than PFSense. But um, basically what they're trying to do is copy what PFSense is. Actually, OpenSense was, because it was the uh, um, build uh, with uh, PFSense code, they end up changing 90% of the code. And, but it's still, the code might be different, but the features are the same. So, you know, figure out what, what's going on there. So for, for me, the winners, and, and, and I'm not gonna go through the Fourier gate because I'm actually gonna show it in the demo. Here, here are my winners. Um, the cheapest option will be going for a DWRT because it has more support for different routers. Um, uh, semi cheap, I, obviously I will choose PFSense because you can you can do more stuff with PFSense. There's actually more support for P, from PFSense. And if you actually get a, um, a firewall, um, it's actually very cheap from Netgate, you can actually get 24-7 um, support from them and um, stuff like that. And for the expensive, I choose Fortigate because that's, you know, not because that's where I work, but um, in terms of um, uh, uh, firewall products that I, I've been working on, I, I have to say that Fortigate has, you know, lead the way for a while, um, almost to the point where they knocking down Palo and Palo, I have a lot of respect for them, especially because they they came up with the term next generation firewall. After Palo came up with that term, then a lot of companies like Checkpoint, uh, Fortinet, uh, Unipairs, and and all those, they started coming up with the next generation. But for many years, uh, Palo was the only one doing a straight uh, next generation firewall uh, features. Uh, eventually, Fortigate, uh, Fortinet catch up and now you know they're you know fighting against each other um so now i'm gonna go with the demo so let me switch here to this part so what i have here is i have a netgear so this is just a regular um i don't know if you can see it hopefully you can um it's, this is just a regular uh, netgear device um it has it was an old device from 2015 um so i'm, I'm gonna take a look at the actual um, um, um features so netgear just like Linksys and aces and others they're trying to come up with features that you know to make make it easy for users to use but again uh, that's pretty much saying, that's kind of like the same comparison as an Apple device and an Android device, where, you know, here you have options to, you know, to do basically the basic stuff versus on an Android, you have, um, you can do customization. Um, again, this is just the, the, the straight up, um, um, uh, you know, GUI from Netgear. And again, doesn't look bad. You know, it has some features that, you know, you can use, stuff like that. But then, uh, let me show you here. And let me change cables. Marco, do you think you can size? Uh, let me see. Does it look better? A little better, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, People can so take a picture and blow it up. 
Um, so what I have here now is um, this is a Cisco, you know, device, also kind of like old. I don't know if you probably can see it better, but let me take this out, plug this in, throw the other one away. This one, um, this one I actually flashed with uh, uh, DDWRT. And uh, I'm gonna show you in a second how the WRT looks like. Um, go here, let's see what my IP is. Okay. This is the part where I was, you know, uh, hoping it doesn't crash because uh, that, that was the thing with the, uh, the WRT. So, sometimes you have to like, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, uh, majority of the time it, it does work. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll try to do something else, but hopefully it will work. Here you go. Um, so this is what the WRT is. Um, if you start going through the setup, um, see here. Um, you know, you have a lot of options. You have, you can do uh, dynamic DNS, uh, you can do advanced routing, you can do a VLAN, you can create um, your one port, you know, you can make it a, you know, uh, you know, get make it like a wireless hotspot where you're gonna get the connection uh, wirelessly, but you can make the, uh, the, the, uh, the one port a LAN port, you know, something along the line. Um, you know, you set up your, your VLAN tags and stuff like that, that actually gonna work with the other, um, whatever the protocol is, I don't recall, 801.11e, uh, X or something, I, I might be wrong with that, sorry. But basically, it's it's a protocol that you know uh, uh, networking manufacturers use for. Um, let, me, let me zoom in here. Hold on. Right. Um, I mean, you can create bridges. You can create a bunch of stuff on the wireless side. I remember uh, uh, Phil. Um, you know, he gave his presentation about securing your wireless connection. He basically said, well, having a pre-shared key, you know, no, that's not gonna do anything. Do you really wanna have something secure then create a, a radio server and use it from there? Well, here you have the option to, to do that. You have, you know, you just have to enable it. Um, there's obviously set up that you have to do, but that's one way to do it. Um, you know, uh, you can do enterprise, uh, you know, WPA to enterprise, you can do radius. Um, you can eventually like set up your own hotspot if you wanna make it like a hotspot, like a captive portal. Um, you can do a NAS because it has a, a USB on the back uh, using Samba stuff like that. Or you can just create your own uh, VPN server uh, you can actually, uh, one of the things I like about this is you can create your own VPN connection. So uh, you set up this one as a server, and when you are, uh, you know, um, you know, at somewhere, you know, traveling, you can actually com connect to your home network and uh, with, a, you know, uh, with VPN, and it's going to be a point-to-point -point VPN. Uh, you can set, uh, set it as a VPN client, or you can set it as a, uh, as a server. So those are the neat features that it has. On the security side of things, you know, it has some, you know, um, things that you can enable here, but that's not really the, uh, um, uh, you know, where this happens. It, where actually everything happens is on the command line. Um, and you will see here that it has a command, uh, uh, you know, uh, options here that you can actually do, uh, you know, stuff like that this is all so that doesn't work anymore so even if you try it that doesn't work but what i did here is i used to have um uh what was it torgar vpn access a long time ago and i what i did is i create a uh, vpn um 
connection from um, this device to um, their service because I wanted to access, uh, I wanted to have a, a full-time VPN connection to a, a server that has connection in Mexico. And, and, and you, you will wonder why you wanna do that. Well, it's because, you know, uh, as you probably know, there's some Netflix series that, you know, that are not shown in the US that are in Mexico. And, you know, I wanted to, to see that or any other content in Mexico. So that's the reason why I created this. So this is one way to do it. Um, you have the option, you know, again, this is just, uh, you can create your own policies here. You can create, uh, uh, you know, jobs and stuff like that, NAT, QOS, QoS administration. But again, that's not the, the beauty of this. The beauty is when you actually start going through the tutorials. Um, this is actually the tutorial for actually setting up your firewall. So if you go to DDWRT or go to forum.ddwrt.com, go to the wiki section, and here gives you a good explanation on how to do all that. Um, uh, one again, one of the things I was using it. Uh, so, and that's the reason I have multiple devices. Um, I have like like four of them. Um, one was my VPN uh, connection, direct connection. The other one was a um, VPN uh, hub. Uh, I'm sorry, a wireless hub. So, uh, you know, basically, I uh, I didn't have any near connections, and I wanted to go wire. Well, I connect everything through the um, through there and work. This is just the basic tutorial, but then also there is, you know, advanced tutorials. Um, you know, you wanna block your, um, you know, your ad, create like an ad blocker. There's an ad blocker you can create just using, you know, stuff like this. It has a proxy server, you know, it has a bunch of stuff, but it's really up to you what you wanna do out of it. Um, it, it you know, uh, it's, Again, uh, I can't stress that enough. Um, but again, uh, this is how it looks on a DWRT. Um, and that's basically the option for this. And this is a Broadcom chip, uh, chipset. Um, and actually this, the, the ones I mentioned, uh, Open, Open WRT, DWRT and Tomato, they are based for, or they're, uh, made for Broadcom uh, uh, chipsets. So that's one thing I, I wanted to mention. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is PFSense. So PFSense, like I said, you can make your own uh, firewall, uh, next generation firewall. Here's, a, here's what it's from the, just the this is an actual um, 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 VM that I created and if, you, if I actually click here, so let's say that you have a, a, a box. Um, uh, this is what's gonna show on the box, nothing else. You actually have to connect to a you know, uh, browser in order to access the default. Here, there's a few things that you can do. Um, you can enable, change the, uh, the factory, or reset the factory default, change the, uh, the passwords, uh, assign interfaces, uh, you know, enable secure shell, you know, stuff like that. But actually, if you want to start doing other stuff, this is where you do it. Um, so if you go to the uh, Packer Manager here, here's the available packets that you'll be able to install in a PFSense. Uh, again, you have uh, HA proxy, you have uh, Nmap, you have um, the Nmap, you have and and top and gd open bgd pf locker again if you want to uh, uh uh block your 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 ads you know at home you can do that there's other ones here so again the list goes on and up now for that again you can do it uh virtual or let me show you here oops my camera blew away my bad Sorry about it. Give me just a second. Mm 
I don't know who's on mute, but I can I can hear you typing. Oops. It's Diane. Sorry, you can't. Marco, I'm just curious. Um, is there anything like groundbreaking new in um, um airwells these days, or have they kind of just really been the same features? Well, again, the, the, the new thing is next generation firewalls. Who has the best generation firewalls and who can do more? Um, that's basically where we at right now. And actually, I'm going to show you once I show the recording uh, version. Um, so this is a box I created, uh, actually not created, but I bought. Um, and as you can see, it just has basic um, stuff. You have your two, two ports, um, one for one, one for uh, LAN. Uh, USBs, um, it has a serial port, and that's it. Um, it has four gigabytes of RAM, and it has um, 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 64 gigabytes of uh, hard drive space. I mean, honestly, only you need like one gigabyte to run PFSense on your computer uh, or, you know, device. As, as RAM, you know, obviously, the more RAM, the better, because depending on the processes that you're running, you can, you know, that's where your feature is gonna be. Okay. Um, did I, did I, did that answer the question, uh, Diane? I'm good. Yeah. Um, so again, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, next contender will be a actual 40 gate. And let me show you what a kind of like a small home device 40 gate looks like. Hey, Marco, I think you can zoom in the screen again. It's, I think, still short, uh, a little small, brother, if you can. Oh. All right. So, this is what a 40 gate device is. Um, this is a uh, 40 gate 60E, and it has the uh, wireless capability. So, actually, it's a, yeah. So, as you can see on the back, uh, the neat features of this is like you have your, I'm sorry if it's going to look kind of, Weird, but you have your one port, you have your DNS, DMC port, and then you have ports one, two, three, four, five, six, plus it's wireless. Um, uh, you have your console port if you need to, you know, boot up, um, um, you know, uh, through the console. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, this one has, for example, one, 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 and one, two. Uh, that's obviously for high availability. So if something goes down, uh, well, you can do it from there. Um, let me zoom in on this one. This is a, a, a next generation firewall. But by default, this is just a basic, uh, um, you know, setup. It only has switch controller, VPN, Wi-Fi controller, and all that. But technically, you have proxy, you have intrusion IPS, you have a web, uh, a WAP. You have an email filter, so you have an email server, advanced endpoint control. You have uh, you are making cert you know certificates, you know, generating certificates for stuff like that. It's like a, a, a certificate authority, um, domain IP reputation. So the list goes on and on and on. Uh, for each sandbox, is obviously a uh, sandbox malware sandbox and. It connects to the cloud. So again, I'm not doing a sales pitch of how good Fortinet or Fortigates are. I'm just telling you what's in this one. But in reality, it is the same thing as what Palo and what Checkpoint and what the others are doing. The the thing is, is the race is who can make it better, who can make it things faster without impacting the machine. I have to tell you, and, and you can actually read it, don't quote me on this. Uh, not because I work for Fortinet, but one of the, the reasons why 40 gates are leading against like Palos, for example, is uh, in terms, for example, um, uh, SSL decryption, when they doing that, um, it takes a lot of resources on a Palo Alto uh, a box versus uh, uh, um, a 40 gate. It, it, it doesn't do, it doesn't take a lot of resources. So again, uh, why and how they're doing things, I don't know, but that's one of the options they have. Um, it also has a pretty picture, so 
um, let's see. Uh, right on the bat, you will see that you will have, you know, connections. Um, it will show you your graphs of how, how um, you know, your internet connection is, you know, your resources. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you're using HTTPS. Now, here's another thing um, that I, I have to be honest, and, and this is where you have to be, um, you know, um, you have to decide what you want to do. Uh, with having a commercial product, sometimes you buy a subscription to a trade intelligence. So, for example, 40, 40 uh, Net has their 40 Guard um, security service. And basically, they are the ones who update the, the latest antivirus, the latest uh, URLs, malicious URLs, uh, malicious IP addresses, and stuff like that. And um, so, and that comes with the box. Sometimes you have to pay a, a fee, but uh, one of the things is that Fortinet has a really cheap um, subscription. If you decide to do the same with a PFSense, um, yeah, it will have that feature, but you have to pay it elsewhere. So uh, just remember that having a firewall just by itself uh, without uh, having the latest updates or the latest, uh, you know, uh, trade intelligence um, um, updates, it will be worthless because every day there's something new and that's what we have to do. And these companies, that's what they do. Uh, they collect that information and they, you know, basically provide it to their paying users. Um, so then for this, you have to get a subscription somewhere to get that type of report. Um, it can be done, but again, you, you're paying. So when I said it was cheap, then probably the, the, uh, it's no longer cheap because then you still have to pay something. Um, the, uh, the DDWRT will not have that feature. There's some options, and I don't remember which tab, um, you can um, block some malicious URLs, um, but it's just giving you like a list. Imagine if you have to put every single uh, you know list of or URLs for all the uh, the malicious um, uh, URLs out there. It's gonna be like you know uh, you're never. It's gonna never gonna end. So uh, that's why buying a subscription is better. Um, uh, all right so with that let's let's talk about the advantages and the uh disadvantages so one of the advantages of using these free uh solutions are obviously they're scalable they're customizable um you can it can be to, uh, tailored or customized to your needs and 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 you don't have to have like vendor locking so you don't have to pay uh Palo Alto, you don't have to pay uh for in a for anything at times, there is a high quality software with this, um, but you know, and and you can have a, a really good security, but if, if it's set up correctly, um, well, one of the disadvantages is um, even though these PFSense and DDWRT are kind of like security products, um, the 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 security is turned off by default, so um, it has. Um, Actually, they don't have a password when you uh, use them the first time. You have to enable like HTTPS in order to access them. Um, you still have to buy the CTI subscriptions. Uh, they're not easy to set up. Um, you need equipment, regardless of how you're gonna get the equipment is, is your choice. Uh, for DDWRP, uh, I will say, if you don't want to screw up your device that you currently have, uh, go online or actually, well, Kind of hard because before I used to go to like the uh, the pound shops or or the uh, thrift stores, and there's always a section where they have these these devices, and and that's what I used to do. Just got those devices for five dollars, and you know obviously you don't know if they work or not, but you know come home, plug it in, start working on them. Boom! Now I have a six hundred six hundred dollar machine. You know uh, I only pay for five bucks for it. Um, uh, but then again, it has a lot of bugs. Um, the equipment, depending where you get it, it's going to be costly. Maintenance is always, always going to be costly. And, 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 and this is why I said maintenance, because it's your time. Same maintenance and training. 
depending how much time you're putting into to, to learn uh, these technologies, that's the, the cost. Because uh, maybe instead of going for, you know, somewhere, well, now you have to, to sit down and learn how to, you know, set up these devices and stuff like that. Um, so that's where the cost comes in. Uh, not really like a monetary cost, but it's more of, you know, of you. Um, these are my references. I'll, I'll share that if you want them. And I, this was it. It wasn't, it wasn't like a long, uh, presentation, but I wanted to, you know, um, if there was something that you wanted to talk about it or, uh, you know, I was, you know, I can, I can answer any questions now. So let me see. Hey, Marco, this, um, the white Fortinet box you have on your desk right now, something like that, how, or even that particular piece, how much would it cost? Hey, Rod, how much you pay for it? I'll pay around seven to $800, and that included one year of subscription. What Marco said is very important, and this is a, a cautionary tale for some of you if, if you think, that you know the first um usually the first uh, thought is oh let me go to ebay and buy it used well the problem with that is that when you check with the provider that serial number is probably registered so they may choose or may choose not to sell you a license that happened to me with a bank device by the way they told me we're not going to sell you uh service you need to buy a new one uh so I would say that the, the, the best way to go about this, if you want to buy like a, uh, commercial brand, I bought the, uh, the Fortinet 60 E uh, it's an amazing device. Yeah. This is, is this one right here. This exactly. One. And actually I can tell you also another personal tell, uh, the first night I installed it, I freaked out by seeing all the connections that I was getting. Uh, I used to have a, um, uh, uh, a, a Nighthawk, and I think that Nighthawk was compromised, in all honesty. Uh, so once I, I started seeing all those weird connections from Russia and other countries, I, I pretty much blocked them off and, and, uh, it's been better for me, to be honest. The throughput is one gigabyte, one gigabit, but most likely it will depend obviously of your, or your last mile to call it a certain way from your, from your house or apartment to the provider. Cool. Thank you. Um, so, um, I'm just, I guess I'm just going to read the questions. Um, no, oh, so so Phil asked about the uh, the PF sense hardware is actually good. It is. It's actually not too bad and it's not too expensive. Um, so if you look at their products, um, you start with this very small one, and uh, also um, not, lately they they have their own cloud version that you can install on AWS. So still, if you're gonna host the stuff on um, AWS, the Google Cloud, and stuff like that. You can actually uh, put a, a PF Sense, and you don't have to pay a subscription. This one, obviously, is a small device, but um, you know, uh, it, it really depends on on you know how much you want to spend. Uh, if we go to um, like Amazon really quick, and I think I have some. Um, so like, like, yeah, let's say for example, you can create your own box out of this. This bare bone device. I, you know, cost 51 bucks. Uh, but again, it doesn't have anything to it. So you have to buy the, uh, everything else. You have to buy the motherboard, the RAM, the whatever. Uh, but if we do PF sense, uh, firewall mini PC or something, then it starts giving you some of the stuff, uh, $300, $206. Uh, let me see if I can, um, you know, it really depends. This one is just, you know, two hundred dollars. Land and one. That's it. I don't think it has anything else. Sixteen gigabytes of RAM, uh, of hard drive, two gigabytes of RAM. Um, yeah. So let me see what other questions. 
what does uh, fourigate telemedicine to mean? That's a good question. I um I'm not a a, a forty forty net guru, uh, but it's uh so you have to understand fourigate forty net makes a lot of security products, and that's what we call the fabric. We have a sandbox. We have uh, you know the these devices are a um, they could also be a router. So they have SD1 capability. They have, uh, you know, um, a lot of options that you can add. And basically, the tele telemetry is, you know, how are they connected and stuff like that. But again, don't quote me on that. I will, I will definitely um, research more if you're interested. Um, um, I think that's that's it. Any other questions? Um, if you don't want to type, you can you can speak up. Well, I I the the deal for Amazon, which I highly recommend, uh, gives pretty much everything. It gives you applications. It gives you antivirus. It gives you look it up. Uh, look it up right there. Um, um. Marco, look up the uh, the four hundred sixty E, and they they might see the the same deal I got. Uh, the, the appliance itself is sixty E. Uh, I'm sorry, it's um four hundred eighty seven. But right, exactly. But again, a box without subscription is just another box on your environment. Right. You have to pay the subscription. Um. um can you can you do a counter plus so we so we can all see the subscriptions because they're they're enumerated. There you go. Right so, here, three four seven. Yeah. That's the one I got, which I think is eight hundred, the, the top right. Is that twenty four seven? No, I didn't get that one. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I, got, I got the, the, the I think I got the eight to five. That's the one I got. Now um Again, not a sales pitch, but if you get a device, just a device, it gives you um, 15 days of uh, everything for free. So you can try it, and if, if it doesn't work, then you can actually return the device, um, and and you don't have to pay for it. But at least you're you're able to see what you know, how does it work, and stuff like that. Um, the one I have at home, it's it's just a um, let me see. Um, let me see. Yeah, so this is the device. It's uh, a bunch of. Uh, this is the actual device, and this is, you know, uh, you know, basically at home. I have a, a very expensive product, uh, and and because I'm a foreign employee, they give me the subscription for free. But you know, I I, I love the device because you can do a bunch of it. Um, there's a lot you can do with it, and uh, and I do have servers, and that's why I want to protect my my stuff. Uh, but again, you have to really spend the time on learning everything, uh, and I'm not. Again, I'm not a subject matter expert. I I work for the company, but I actually don't touch foreign net products. Uh, but I have to use foreign net products, so I have to have uh, familiarity. But then, when it comes to like, you know, asking uh, you know questions, and I I would really like to the actual people. So the pants the pants are great too. I had a I had pants for. I had a pen for almost uh, two years, three years, and unfortunately, it was a pen two hundred, and it it got um it was only hundred um, uh, speed wise, and uh, it was not good enough for for when. But the pens are great too. The thing is that it's the the cost is way higher. Yeah. Yeah. 
and, and that's the thing with subscription. Sometimes it's not the box of what you're paying, but it's a subscription. Uh, 40, 40, 40 guard subscription is way cheaper than Palo Alto's. And that's why uh, a lot of companies are, 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 are including the government, it's going for it and leaving Palo because of the cost. So that's a good point. Okay. Um, any other questions? Um, can I get discounts? Unfortunately not. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, um, I wish I, I, I could do. Uh, in fact, for me, I can only get one discounted device per year, but I cannot like because obviously every, everything goes by a serial number they know where i where i purchase it or who purchase it and if i let's say you razor it and it, it doesn't match with marco then they're going to come back to me and say hey how come you know you have that so they they pretty much say it as they, you result you you sold it you know for for you know uh, to make money or something and that goes like, right yeah uh, the stuff so that's why I, I said that I made the comment that I highly discourage uh, that you go on eBay, for example, and buy a used one. That it, it, it will cost you double. You 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 have. I have a a pan that I never use because they will not activate it for me. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions here: How often you should replace a firewall? Well, um, kind of like what uh, Rob said. It 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 is for a, a enterprise. Obviously, you know. Technology, uh, there is new technology out there every time. So I will say do a refresh every three to four years. As long as the, uh, or or if, if let's say the, uh, um, the the box is not gonna get any more um, future upgrades or, or upgrades in general, then at that point it's, it's time to move on. It's kind of like, you know, Windows 7 and Windows 10. Well, you have to move out of Windows 7 because there's no more support for it. So at that point, you have to buy a computer with Windows 10. Same concept. Um, but um, for the most part, um, again, not talking for all the companies, but at least my company, they, you know, they continue upgrading even older versions, and that's actually very interesting. Here's the reason why: um, because there's a lot of companies out there uh, that are our customers that might not have the the, uh, the money to, to buy new equipment or or for whatever reason they cannot upgrade and they need to keep their old 40 gate but I still they need to have the latest patches and stuff like that so 40 net actually um, creates patches for all their um, firmwares so like right now we're on six that's four they still make for six that two they still make for six that zero they still make for five that five five that two I think I seen it all the way to like four. I mean, obviously there is a, a, a break where they, you know, basically they uh, they will not continue doing it. But for the most part, they it's very um, they patch it, you know, regularly. So um, so Christina, so why you need a firewall then for? Okay. Yeah, if your machine is not connecting to the internet, why would you even buy a device like this? <laughs> no, but what do you mean? Like the, the machine is not connected to the internet. So if somebody asked a question that if, if the machines were not connected to the internet, if you still had to pay for a license. So the answer is yes. And Christina said, what would you need a fiber? And I agree if you're not. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I get it. Okay, yeah. Like I said, it's you only apply, or you only install a firewall, depending on your needs. Uh, how secure? If how is just a firewall? Because this is about psychology too. If you think that, uh, and let's just take it for um, any other security, uh, physical security products. If having a web, uh, 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 not a webcam, but a, a um, a camera in your house, like one of those rings, will make you feel safer to live, um, you know, to, to live in the neighborhood. And, you know, that's, that's a security, uh, something that you're applying, you know, to secure yourself. 
Um, if buying one of those um, locks that cost very expensive versus a $50 lock will make you feel more safer at home, then do it. So same, same concept with, you know, uh, firewalls. If, have, if, if uh, you are going to be surfing the net and, 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 and you think that something, someone is going to be compromising or, or, you know, your, your network or anything like that, then, you know, maybe it's time to install a firewall, but if you don't really care about it and, and, and you only use, you know, the internet for YouTube videos, any of that, and, and you maybe you use a VPN subscription somewhere else, then at that point, no, you don't need a, 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 um, a firewall at home. It, again, it's only it depends on your needs and what you're trying to secure. And, well, and, and what Alex is saying is, is also valid. If you, if you put yourself into this, you don't need really to buy a branded device. You can do your own PFSens and uh, like Alex says, he, he, uh, he has Snort. That's a kudos to you because uh, it takes a bit to learn Snort and to maintain it. Yep. And, and, and PFSense, for example, have that, has that, uh, I think, has that, uh, one of the uh, applications is for a snort, I believe, or Suricata. Let me search for it. No. Oh, I thought I had it. Oh, never mind. Here you go. So, uh, PF Sense that has an application that you can install. And, and you can create your own rules for, um, you know, and it's not. Right. Well, the, the, also there is, there's a caveat when using Snort and or Suricata, which is, Suricata is what happens after, it's almost like MariaDB and, and MySQL. Uh, when, when Cisco bought uh, Snort, then uh, they, they created Suricata. The, the thing about this, this uh, frameworks, they're amazing, but you need two things. One, a device that can actually scan packets on the go. And two, you need huge storage if you're, if you're really processing the locks, because you can be overwhelmed pretty quick. In fact, one of the ways to actually attack is, is not defense technologies is to overwhelm them with, with packets, because if in the back end, there's not enough, there's not a either log rotation or or uh, a a good log setup you either are not going to see it or, or the device is going to get slower or even crash mm -hmm. 